Today's Drill Design Solutions tutorial is all about life hacks, these little things that make your workflow go faster and faster, or maybe little things that you just didn't know existed within Pyware. I know I've learned three or four things already just from this last season uh, that you can do in Pyware. So uh, some of these you may know, some may be new to you. Let's jump right in. The, the glue and, and knife tool, you can actually group by holding it down and dragging around the form. Check it out regroup all you just literally and i didn't know I, just, I don't know why i didn't know this but you can hold and just run your cursor across all these guys and it'll link them together without having to do it and if you let up you run out of space just click on the next guy and then keep going and you don't have to sit here and go find next find next find next find next which is what i used to always do uh, if i was animating these uh, these ghost props in this pac-man show here and i was trying to uh, move on to the winds and the drums, I would select all these guys, these props and the people moving them. And I didn't want to, I wanted to make sure that all of that animation uh, was you know, not messed with for these four pages. I would go through and I would go display and I would say lock selection. Now what you'll notice is now they're all grayed out. So I can go through and start highlighting other groups I can grab uh, other groups that are down here without worrying about uh, grabbing them and changing anything that they did. I'll go through and I'll know that my boundaries are the 40 yard lines. And when I was creating this, I would just hi hide all these guys so they weren't a distraction to me while I was designing. So I say hide selection. And I was like, now I can just focus on the props. And it just really helped me with my quality of life to make sure these guys all came down and did the right thing correctly. So that's how to use lock and unlock and hide and unhide to help you with your, uh, you know, your designing process, keeping everything clean and keeping you focused while you design. If you had a line of kids, you wanted them to do -si do around each other, maybe you were just looking for more of a, an effect moment here as opposed to a, a big transition. You just select your line. Notice they're all glued together. We're gonna go glue apply pattern a b this way you're not having to go through and and glue people to each other you've got every other person now glued with just a couple clicks okay so you got your two groups of kids one thing i do when i do do -si dos is i'll reverse this select them i'll hit the thing again I'll, the uh, glue tool again and i'll do group like secondary count except now you know that throughout this entire transition they are glued that way. It's gonna really help, you'll see why. I grab these guys, I use the track tool to do my do -si dos Come back here, here's the end point. Wherever you click, they're gonna go. See that? So wherever you click, that whole line is gonna move that way. So I'm gonna put them there, hit accept. Now they're on top of each other, so that's weird. Let's drag this back a couple counts. Grab your other group. Hit the track tool, come down. Come back, accept. Now you've got a nice little transition. do -si do hits on four. I want to focus real quickly on these color guard members, specifically these two right here. In this transition, they cross right through the, the uh, bass drums to get to this set. So I'm going to want to animate them to come around to the 45 and just make their way down. An easy way to do it is to just select the adjuster tool. Click it without clicking any performers and you can see everyone's paths. Now, you can click on the performer, go to edit path. I like to take some handles off of it, make it a curve path by clicking here underneath viewer handles, just move that path out, and then now that'll be a curved path. But wait, you're not done. Click edit path again. It's really important that you do it in this order. Click on the next performer and edit and do theirs, edit their path, viewer handles, it's a little tricky to learn at first because you'll want to go clicking on performers, but you always have to click edit path to kind of solidify the path before you move on to another performer. Click accept, and now they probably are going to make it around just fine. And that looks like a nice transition. And there's this tool that I didn't know existed. I don't know if maybe it was on a newer version or whatever, but if you go to the arrow, you can do this little option, 
create arrows from paths. So now that you've created that path that's curved, look at that, boom. You highlighted your guard people, you hit created arrows from path, and now when you put your notes in the production sheet, you can say G11 and G14, see arrows for curved path. And as a, the director can find those arrows and make sure to explain it to G11 and G14 properly so that they can take a curved path around the bass drums into set number 12 here. So say you wanted to create an arc in the middle of this form here, uh, you could uh, make sure the interval is perfect by clicking on these endpoints. Maybe you wanted a, like an arc like this, but you keep getting a person here and a person here. Well, go here and say omit overlaps, and anywhere that it's overlapping, uh, it gets rid of the performers, and then you have an even interval all the way through. Okay. Now we're not done there, of course, that's if you're designing a set, but if you are transitioning the set, uh, you can use it as well. So let's just move these guys real quick. We'll just rotate this super fast. Uh, say the form rotates like this. And we want, we had it at one. What, how many people in? One, two, three, four, five, six people in and one, two, three, four, five people in. So let's take this. We'll take the arc tool again and find our people. We went six people in here. So click there and then five people in here, um, there. And then we can just kind of rotate that. Now you'll notice there's a person on each overlapping thing. So you hit omit overlaps. You're not done. Since we've had two people overlapped, we have to add two to our number. So we, instead of seven, we have to put nine. And that gives everybody a dot. And now you can have an even interval as you go. And it rotates and it looks good, stays connected. So omit overlaps is a really good tool. Labels. Here's how I do my labels. I'll select everyone at the end of a drill when I'm finished. I'll select the entire line here, every single page. I hit label. I go down. I go closer as far as I can. And then I do one, two. Click on further. And then I do this. These changes apply to range one through 100, 306. Every single page tab now has the labels at the same distance for every single page. In this page, I have the sousaphones on side one moving to a line, and I need to get my side two guys there quickly while I'm writing. So I'm just gonna uh, control C, highlight these guys, control V. They're gonna paste them way over here, so you've got to go mirroring options. Invert uh, pasted shape across the mid stage. Looks like they're all twisted up, so I gotta hit flip and paste. Boom, nailed it. And in that short amount of time, I've got them going to the correct set. And then you can fine tune it. I like to do by using the morph tool. So you click up here, morph tool. And then now I'll go into a smaller resolution, like a four quarter or eight step resolution. And you can delete half and it just kind of smooths out the form and kind of makes it look, you know, uh, a little bit nicer. You can you can pull things out. If you want like a dress person to be four outside, that's the furthest outside. You can double check those things, or you want the you know guy to be on the top of the numbers on the forty. And that this is where I like to just kind of fine tune my forms, and I'll even you know expand them just to make sure everyone is using, um, everyone's taking a good step size, and and I'm, I'm allowing everything to breathe correctly as the the forms are transitioning. Using the production sheet. Use the production sheet to put all your info on for your directors. I stopped using text boxes a long time ago. I find that this helps keep me much more organized. But really the difference is when you go to print your charts, you can put this at the bottom of the page where the, uh, the page is, is white anyway, has no info. And so if you click here and you add the notes to the bottom, you can, um, you know, put all the things that you want in there. Transition counts, this stuff will be at the bottom, set title, and then I always put notes. And then at the bottom of the page, instead of uh, trying to find different spots for text boxes to go in the corner, uh, you know, sometimes they get, uh, especially with these bigger bands, they get covered up, they cover up dots. So I always do that and it plunks it right down here in the blank part of the page anyway. So I hope this was helpful to you. 
Uh, please like and subscribe to my channel if you like these Pyware videos.